Imagine waking up tomorrow and hearing that a single nuclear weapon has detonated on American soil. Where does it land? A bustling city? A military base? Could your hometown be next? It sounds unthinkable, but understanding how and why certain places become nuclear targets is critical in today's uncertain world. These aren't abstract hypotheticals anymore. The landscape of deterrence and destruction is shifting faster than most people realize. Welcome to Learning Military, your go-to source for understanding modern defense strategies, technology, and history. If you value clear insights into the pressing issues shaping our world, hit subscribe, tap that notification bell, and please consider dropping a super thanks to directly support deep research videos like this one. Today, we're exploring a grim but essential topic, would you get nuked? We'll examine the critical locations that adversaries might target in both limited and large-scale nuclear strikes against the United States. We'll analyze strategic reasoning, casualty estimates, survivability, and the chilling realities of nuclear escalation. And just as importantly, we'll talk about how this has changed since the Cold War and what that means for the world we live in now. So with that, let's dive in. When we talk about nuclear attacks, we often imagine an apocalyptic scenario, but there's another, less discussed possibility, a limited nuclear strike. This isn't about wiping out cities immediately, but sending a calculated, terrifying message. These strikes are surgical, symbolic, and strategic, often designed to paralyze decision makers, not annihilate populations. Imagine a single low-yield nuclear weapon detonating near a remote missile silo in North Dakota or Montana. The aim? Not mass casualties, but a crippling blow to America's retaliatory capability. The adversary's logic here is chilling yet clear. Demonstrate resolve without guaranteeing total escalation. Russian strategy known as escalate to de-escalate considers exactly this scenario, launching a tactical nuclear strike to intimidate opponents into backing down. This could also take the form of a nuclear demonstration blast in an isolated area, a signal flare with terrifying implications. These tactics are designed to create strategic paralysis, to force adversaries into hesitation and negotiation before escalation spirals. But here's the critical question. Could a nuclear war remain limited? Would America restrain its response, or would fear and uncertainty trigger a catastrophic escalation? If escalation occurs, what happens next? In a full-scale nuclear exchange, the initial targets wouldn't just be major cities. First, adversaries would aim for America's nuclear arsenal, command and control centers, and strategic military installations. Places like the missile fields in Wyoming, North Dakota, and Montana, submarine bases in Georgia and Washington, bomber airfields in Missouri and Louisiana, and key command posts like NORAD or STRATCOM in Omaha. Only moments later, major urban areas like Washington DC, New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, and Houston would become targets, intended to crush America's morale infrastructure, and capability to recover. These aren't just cities, they're nerve centers of government, finance, logistics, and cultural identity. Declassified Cold War plans reveal thousands of targets that include industrial centers, infrastructure nodes, and critical population hubs. Modern simulations confirm similar target priorities. In other words, almost nowhere significant would be safe. Understanding these priorities underscores just how serious the nuclear threat remains today, and as newer delivery systems like hypersonic glide vehicles and dual-capable regional missiles come online, time to impact will shrink, increasing the likelihood of panic and miscalculation. One nuclear strike might seem manageable on paper, but real-world crisis dynamics tell a different story. Historically, once nuclear weapons come into play, controlling escalation becomes nearly impossible. Imagine a scenario. An adversary detonates a single weapon on a military site. U.S. early warning systems flash red. American leaders have mere minutes to decide if this is a single strike or the beginning of an all-out attack. With survival on the line, quick decisions based on incomplete information could lead to retaliatory launches and rapid escalations. Adding to this danger, systems like Launch on Warning or Russia's Dead Hand Automated Retaliation could turn even limited misunderstandings or technical glitches into nuclear Armageddon. These are systems built for a world that assumes the worst and reacts with full force. Past near misses remind us that accidents, miscalculations, and misunderstandings have brought us perilously close to disaster before. The grim truth? Once the nuclear threshold is crossed, stepping back becomes profoundly difficult. 
crisis instability, limited communication, and a race against time all converge to make nuclear decision-making uniquely dangerous. It is less a chess match and more a sprint through a minefield blindfolded. If nuclear weapons were used today, what kind of toll could we expect? Even a limited strike on a populated area, say a naval base or mid-sized city, could immediately cause tens of thousands of deaths. Fallout and radiation sickness would compound the devastation, affecting regions hundreds of miles away. In a full-scale war, the toll becomes almost incomprehensible. Cold War era estimates suggested up to 100 million American fatalities. Modern simulations like Princeton's 2019 Plan A forecast immediate casualties exceeding 90 million across the Northern Hemisphere within hours. Survivability would heavily depend on geography, infrastructure resilience, and wind patterns. Regions away from key targets like portions of western Texas, rural parts of the Rocky Mountains, or remote areas in Nevada might initially fare better. Yet even survivors would face devastating fallout, infrastructure collapse, supply chain disruption, and a potential global nuclear winter, severely limiting long-term survival. Emergency services would be overwhelmed, hospitals destroyed, and transportation networks crippled. Within days, food shortages, mass migration, and breakdowns in civil order would follow. For many, the question would shift from survival to endurance in an unrecognizable world. So why haven't we seen nuclear war yet? It largely comes down to doctrine, the set of rules and philosophies countries adopt about nuclear weapons use. The United States maintains calculated ambiguity, never completely ruling out first use, aiming to deter adversaries through uncertainty. Russia openly allows nuclear first use if national survival feels threatened, embodying the concept of limited nuclear use as a coercive tool. China officially maintains a no first use policy, though experts question if that stance would hold under severe stress, such as a conflict over Taiwan. But doctrines aren't foolproof. Policies like launch on warning or automated failed deadly systems designed to ensure retaliation ironically increase risks of accidental war. With fraying international treaties, increasing weapons modernization, and heightened geopolitical tensions, these doctrines shape a precarious global nuclear balance. The absence of war is not the absence of risk. In fact, the longer deterrence holds, the more tempting it becomes to believe it always will. That belief could be a fatal error. Consider what nuclear weapons truly represent. Each warhead is more powerful than those dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Using publicly available tools like NukeMap or Princeton simulations, we see a single modern nuclear strike over New York City could immediately kill over a million people flatten entire burrows, and ignite firestorms visible from space. Maps of potential targets released by institutions like FEMA graphically show that in a large-scale exchange, major cities and military installations would be obliterated within hours. Fallout zones, spreading radioactive particles hundreds of miles downwind, turn initially unaffected regions into hazardous areas within days. These aren't hypothetical exercises. They are powerful reminders of what is at stake. The visuals may be theoretical, but the weapons are real, the targets are real, and the consequences are irreversible. Seeing the scale of devastation underscores how critical it is to maintain peace, strengthen communication between rivals, and pursue arms control vigorously. The haunting reality is that nuclear threats haven't vanished. They've evolved. Today's landscape mixes old Cold War tensions with new unpredictable dynamics. Understanding nuclear targeting, escalation risks, casualty estimates, and strategic doctrines is crucial, not just for policymakers, but for every informed citizen. So would you get nuked? Unfortunately, I would, and the uncomfortable answer is this. If nuclear war does break out, few places would be genuinely safe. Survival depends as much on luck as preparedness. It depends on geography, timing, and decisions made in boardrooms thousands of miles away. This isn't meant to scare, but to inform and prepare. If you've gained valuable insights today, hit that like button. It helps more people see this important message. Subscribe for more deep dives into military strategy, tech, and global security each week. And if you appreciate this level of research, please consider leaving a super thanks to directly support the channel. I'd love to hear from you too. What surprised or concerned you the most about today's topic? Let me know in the comments below, but this is Learning Military. Until next time, stay informed, stay sharp, and stay ahead.
Thanks for watching.